we are joined now on set by a special guest here to share his macro outlook and talk about debt and M&A expectations and so many other things. Guggenheim Partners Executive Chair uh, Alan Schwartz is here. It's great to have you uh, back at the table. Nice to be back. Uh, a lot to talk about. And I always think of you as somebody who has your pulse on the corner office, if you will, sort of the CEO set and what's going on in the boardroom these days. And so we're watching the markets play out. We've also got a whole bunch of earnings uh, reports that have been coming over the last couple of days. But I'm curious sort of how you think that translates or not into confidence, if you will. Yeah, well, that's a good question. I think uh, in boardrooms and in the C-suite, um, I think that the that corporations, the, the larger corporates, public corporates, kept their balance sheets very strong, uh, unlike lots of other parts of the market. And so now that they're seeing some of the, they were kind of out of the M&A market in a lot of cases right. because of private capital. And so now they're seeing a chance to come back in, right, because they kept their balance sheet strong. At the same time, the macro environment, um, especially geopolitical and all these other things, um, you know, creates concerns in the boardroom as to whether now's the time or wait on some of these things. So what we're seeing is we saw a big drop in M&A activity, right, when uh, the capital markets tied up for a mm -hmm. lot of the private sales. But now you're seeing a lot of, uh, let's say, discussions and activity beginning, uh, clearly picking up from the corporate side that's seeing their opportunity to come in. Uh, but, you know, how many of those will get across the line? Right. We're going to have to wait. But does see. that signal then that there's a confidence that we're not heading into a 2024 recession or soft land? What, is, no. what does that mean? No, I, I find it's very interesting. You know, they're not sure about the economy. And personally, you know, I was in the camp that 23, we would not see a recession because of the strength of consumer balance sheets to start out and demographics, which people don't pay enough attention to. And so we didn't expect higher rates to hit consumption right away for a whole bunch of those reasons. On the other hand, in talking to Ann Walsh, our CIO, we keep an eye on what's happening in the, um, in the banking and the financial markets. And, and what's happened is the duration risk that lenders and a number of borrowers took takes longer to be impacted by rising rates. Uh, but it's happening. There's a tightening in conditions. So we personally, we believe there's a recession coming. Now, we don't know how deep. It's hard to know. Going back to your question, though, just to set right. that up for that, going back to that question, I think that a lot of companies are looking now strategically for the long term, right. and they're really not just looking to consolidate, although certain areas are. They're really looking to get the capabilities and the technologies that they need for the very changing environment they're looking at. And so a lot of the deal activity will not be dependent on the economy unless there's some big, you know, disruptive wave. How much of the hesitation is just, look, if you're a corporate, you got to answer for the price you pay. So you don't want to pay too much and look like a dummy. And if you're somebody being acquired, you don't want to accept a bid that's too low. So just trying to get to that feeling of, I think yeah, this I is mean, a great you, you deal, put, but I'm going to have to justify it. No, you it. put your finger right on it. I would say it always happens. Sellers are saying, well, wait a minute. Um, you know, look at my 52-week high. You know, buyers are going, yeah, but that doesn't count anymore, right? But, and look, a number of sectors are pretty far down, too, right? So um, I think that, you know, corporations that feel like they have a strong strategic plan, and, and let's say this, that have strong backing from their investors on the plan they're on, um, they're looking to step in now because they've been telling people they've been waiting. Now they're starting to see the sellers come and say, let's be a little more reasonable. Yeah. And then, look, the one other issue that we all know is antitrust. That's having, that's having a bit of a chilling effect. But the fact that companies that decided to fight right. um, this latest antitrust wave and have won is giving a little more confidence that if if the facts really support that so, they should be able to do it, that they'll go forward. But does that mean the conversation in the boardroom is saying, so we're in, what are we, end of October, called mid-October. Do they say, let's wait a year and see what the world looks like in, in terms of a political world a year from now, or, or let's strike now and see what happens? I think there's more strike now. Uh, as I say, if you've, been, if you've been sitting there saying, look, we really need these capabilities for our right. long term. We really need this technology. Or this. So, again, not, right. a lot of it's not consolidation. Because in the consolidation wave, you'll see a lot of right. uh, stock for stock. But on that side, I think since they've been waiting, you know, they don't know. They don't want right. to miss the window. How concerned should we be if you consider them the smart money? that private equity has effectively stepped away from the table, if you will, 
when it comes to deal making. We uh, were looking at, they were represented something like 40% of the marketplace in terms of M&A right. just about a year ago. Right. And now, what is it, 25% or something right. like that. So if you, if you think they know something, uh, it may be a great opportunity for strategics to get in insofar as they don't have competition, but uh, there might be a reason for that, which may not be very good. Well, no, I, I don't think that's what's driving. I think okay. uh, a lot of the, the larger private equity companies have new funds and they're really looking, but they're kind of waiting on the financial side of the equation. On, on, you know, interest rates are way more important to their deals. Right. And that's where duration risk, okay? In the private equity wave we saw, which was a lot of different deals, a lot of them were financed by floating rate debt, right? And so there's a lot of those deals from the past where you're starting to see delinquencies, you're starting to right. see bankruptcies. And that's part of why, say, Ann Walsh and I think we're still, we, we think there's already a tightening of financial right. conditions. And so that group of buyers is more affected by the tightening of financial conditions than the corporates who have been sitting on cash who can come in.